Previously on To The Horizon Sailing, we spend our Christmas holidays grinding away at our mass project, we find leaky fuel tanks, and service our rudder and steering gear. All right, it is Christmas day here at the boatyard. We find some dirty treasure under the mast and we receive the best Christmas gift of them all, extra helping hands at the boatyard. This time, we pull the mast out of the shed, reveal the shiny new paint job, and work our butts off putting all of the pieces back together again. It felt huge to have gotten this far in such a lofty project, but we knew we still had a lot of work ahead to become a sailboat once more. Julio is done. He sprayed final coat yesterday, or no, two days ago. So now we get to pull the stick out of the shed and taste all these holes. What do you think, Ralph? Is it awesome? Done. This piece Sweet. looks nice too. Huh? This piece. Yeah. So fresh and so clean, clean. We couldn't wait to get this shiny stick back in the boat where she belongs, so we got right to work. We were dog sitting again for Jack's sister, so we had Perseus here for extra moral support during this project. What do you think, Ralph? Ralph, hey, can you look at me? That's not looking, that's licking. So now we have a question for you. How do you eat an elephant? The answer is one bite at a time. And that's the exact attitude we had towards the challenge that lay ahead, which involved reinstalling every bit of hardware back onto the mast. Another day working on the mast. I am taking apart the outhaul winch and servicing it, cleaning up all the probably 30 years worth of grease and grime that have gotten pretty gross in there. So I've got some diesel that's helping clean it up real nice. And we're just chugging along with all these little tiny projects. The day is almost coming to an end and we are almost done rebuilding this winch. Jack has put a ton of things on the masthead and we're almost ready to call it a day. I'll show you what I've got so far. I'm about to put the top cap on and we should be ready to go. Corrosion is a boat owner's worst enemy, so we used an anti-corrosive product called Tef Gel to prevent the aluminum mast and stainless fasteners from causing corrosion from the dissimilar metals touching. So it is Wednesday. We're hoping that we will be a sailboat by Monday once we launch again. So that's really exciting. Now, right now I am just passing these wires through this hole in the side so that the mast doesn't sit on the wires once it's sitting flat on the mast step surface. And then we're gonna put the spreaders on, rig up the spreader lights and get our rigging all put on and we should be pretty set up. It's pretty exciting. Can't wait, it's been three months in the process just to get this far, so it feels good. Well, we are headed to the boatyard by car, hopefully for the last time, at least for a while. Tomorrow we motor over with Gemini and we will be hopefully stepping the mast, probably like mid-morning-ish. And we are headed to get some last bit of work done on the mast and hopefully we'll be all set up for tomorrow. Explain to us what you're doing. I am installing the cotter pins for the spreaders. 
and then I'll wire up the spreader lights. So then tomorrow I can install the rest of the mast steps and then we'll start um, running shrouds. Sweet. Yep. Cool. Last minute, we waxed the entire mast to protect the new paint job. We were finally installing the last bit of synthetic rigging to complete our synthetic conversion. We had been waiting for the last piece of the puzzle, which was modifying the spreader tips as to not create any chafe on our Dyneema shrouds. Although we switched our rigging to Dyneema, we stuck with a wire forestay to plan for a future roller furler. We had been chipping away at this mast refit for over three months, so by the end, we were definitely getting a little worn out and a little loopy. Oh, almost there. Almost only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes. And in boat projects. Okay. I'll add that to that <laughs> saying. Okay, today is the day. We are motoring over to um, Berkeley Marine Center and in the afternoon we're gonna step the mast. So this morning I'm gonna put all of our dead eyes on um, with the toggles, bend all the collar pins in place, get this massive piece of metal, the extended toggle for the future roller furler we're gonna have Put my backstage adjuster dead eye on with cotter pins and then we'll skedaddle out of here. It's pretty low tide right now, so we're gonna wait till around 10, another 20 minutes. Should give us enough water. And hang out at the docks. We're not gonna haul till this afternoon, but that's okay. I've got other stuff to do. I wanna check my dripless on the shaft because it's still dripping when the uh, prop is in gear, which it shouldn't do but I tightened up the um, bracket, so maybe that'll help. Yeah, that's about it. Kind of nervous, but excited. We've been waiting since December to do this. So let's see how it goes. As we headed out the marina breakwater, we crossed wakes with some fellow marina friends, and we shared that we were headed to the boatyard to put our mask back where she belonged. It's been since Christmas. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Unfortunately, our dripless packing system was leaking and our prop shaft was vibrating a little more than we would like. But alas, we would have to investigate further before opening up another can of worms. Finally, the moment we had all been waiting for. It was time to step the mast and make Gemini a sailboat once again. What do you think? I think it's a huge accomplishment. Hell yeah. All that work and it's just gonna be up in the sky and we'll never see it. <laughs> okay, so we, I made Granny's coin last night with a little ladybug jewel from um, Farfetched. And then on the back side of the protector is our original coin. And now it's gonna go to the bottom of the mast. Yay! Okay, here we go. Mwah. 
There we go. There she will live. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Toggles and you know, I mean, turnbuckles, and you're done. It's okay, we'll get the force stay on, the back stay on, and then uppers and, uppers and intermediates, and then lowers. Our boat is designed with a keel stepped mast, meaning the mast goes through a hole in the deck and through the cabin to the base of the keel. This means that the first 8 to 10 feet of the mast are inside the boat and well braced, making it much more stable even without our shrouds being connected. Once the mast was sitting in its mast step, we began with connecting our forestay and backstay, followed by the uppers and intermediates and then the rest of the supporting shrouds. With our synthetic conversion, we tried to tighten everything evenly without worrying too much about the details since we knew we would have adjusting to do once back in the water. What do you think? I think it's awesome. So the day has come. We have stepped the mast. We've been spending the weekend in the boatyard. And now we are ready to launch again. And we are headed straight to our favorite anchorage in the bay. It's called Clipper Cove. I'm sure you guys have seen our previous videos of how much we love that little cove. So. We're excited to head that way and relax, do some tuning of our rig, see how all that pans out once we're floating, and just, you know, take a couple days off. With all this coronavirus craziness, we might as well stay home and hunker down. So that's our plan. We are prepping the last couple things before they launch us, and hopefully we'll be on our way to Clipper soon. All right, here we go, back in the water. Off we go. Thank you, Berkeley Marine Center, once again. You guys are great. Goodbye, Berkeley Marina. Hello, Clipper Cove. This project was one of the biggest challenges we've faced so far as boat owners and liveaboards. Life on the hard is tough, and we were tackling projects that were big safety items that require lots of detail and care. We were proud of ourselves for completing this project completely on our own, and now we were finally seeing the payoff. You're gonna dive? No, I'm just gonna jump. Nope, One, okay. Two, three. <laughs> Hard to catch your breath. Yeah. Going down again. Okay. <laughs> I like your legs sticking up like that. That was great. <laughs> Feels good to shock your body a little bit and wake it up. 
Make sure you're used to the cold water. Considering we sail here all the time, you might as well be ready for anything and be a little bit more accustomed to the cold water. So on a day like today, Clipper Cove is the perfect place to do it. So here we are, hanging from our anchor chain. Oh, it's scrubbing. warm in the sun. Yeah, scrubbing the bottom and putting off work for a couple <laughs> more hours. <laughs> All right, we are going to finally go sailing for the first time since refitting the mast and the rigging. Let me show you our rigging. I have all of my frapping knots on. Those are the main knots that hold this rigging. Now we're going to go sailing. So I have a jib. It's not too windy. So we'll just do a couple tacks and then head home. I imagine the rig will stretch quite a bit, um, but we've had it under tension for quite a few weeks now, maybe two weeks now. So we'll see how the cap and intermediates go. Um, I imagine once we lean over, get a good heel, we'll have the lowers pretty, not pretty loose, but relatively loose. Um, See. All right, anchors ready to be raised. Let's go sailing. With about eight to 10 knots of breeze, we were excited to see how our synthetic rigging would perform under sail. It was a short sail home, but we were stoked to have the wind in our sails once again. Thanks for watching, and a big thanks to our Patreon crew. Please subscribe to our channel and join us next time for a road trip adventure down the coast. We're driving down south to Marina del Rey to hopefully buy a dinghy that we found on Craigslist. Okay guys, she's on there, we'll see. Now we have to figure out how to strap her down properly.